Hey, thanks for joining me today. My guest today is the uh, director of a new, a new film called The Forgotten Pandemic. It uh, discusses uh, addiction recovery, and uh, his name is Adam Comer. Adam, welcome to the show. Rick, thank you so much for having me, man. It's an honor to be here with you. So Adam has uh, uh, created a film. He's part of ST, S2L Recovery, a, uh, we'll talk about that. Um, it's, a, it's a recovery uh, service for people who are struggling with addiction issues. But they decided to uh, put, a, put a film together called The Forgotten Pandemic, and um, Adam is the director of that film and executive producer. And, and uh, talk to me a little bit, Adam, about uh, how that film uh, came about, why, why you decided to make a film. Yeah, well, this might be different for your listeners than some, but you know, I we like you said, I'm a pastor and uh, uh, work at a residential recovery facility. But uh, you know, we felt it was right when the pandemic of COVID started, early 2020, and we we felt like it was time to make just a new promo video for our ministry to promote the recovery center. You know, a three minute promo video and. Uh, inside of that, just kind of thinking through that, I contacted a, a dear friend, Denver Schindel, who's just a, an amazing videographer and editor, and just asked him about the promo video. And inside of praying through that, and also, if you remember around this time, all of a sudden documentaries really, they probably have always been popular, but it seemed like everyone started focusing on documentaries, I guess because we were locked down. But if you remember the Tiger uh, King, the forgotten, yes. or the, the last dance with Jordan and the social dilemma and just documentary, documentary. And we felt that the Lord was saying, Hey, this, this thing that you're doing to promote us to well, that's great. But this addiction, this, this forgotten pandemic is bigger than just us to well. We need to get the word out. And so our yes was on the table. I'll, I'll be honest with you. If I knew now what I knew then about making a film, I would have been a lot more hesitant about saying, yes, we'll do this. But we were obedient and just started down this process of of navigating what it's like. Opening do- God began to open doors. We had uh, Zach Williams uh, interview. We had Mark Hall from Casting Crowns come in and just have, were blessed with pastors and doctors and politicians and guys going through and have recovered from addiction and just really a labor of love and, and proclaiming the truth that addiction's not a surprise to God and that there's freedom from it. Mm. And it's it's really a, a, a wake-up call for, for us as believers and for the Capital C Church. So speaking of people in the documentary— I'm watching the. I'm watching your film. I you know I got a link and watched it. And this guy pops up. He's an addiction counselor specialist. Guy by the name of Jim Cofield. Yeah. Jim Cofield and I went to high school together. Wow. And Jim Cofield led me to the Lord. Wow. You don't say, D- Doctor Cofield. I could listen to for hours. He I'm has going, one of those Jim voices. Cofield. That's amazing. He is what? a brilliant man. Brilliant what? man. You bet. Well, he wasn't when he was seventeen. <laughs> he wasn't Probably that brilliant not. as a seventeen-year-old. So I think is he from? Are you from East Tennessee then? Knoxville. We went to Farragut yeah. High School together. Oh Lord, help! I went to Bearden High School. Oh, no, this interview is going to take a turn. This interview is about to take a turn. Arch rivals. <laughs> For those listening, Bearden and Farragut are both in the city of Knoxville, and they absolutely are, like he said, arch Arch rivals. rivals. So Jim Copeland, I'm going, oh my goodness, I can't believe you got Jim Copeland. I'm just sitting there freaking out going, oh, because I haven't. We, you know, we've kind of stayed in touch, but not really. You know, we haven't been in contact probably in 10 years, so he has no idea I'm making documentaries now. And oh. so anyway, that was just, that was awesome. I had to just do a little aside there. The guy who led me to the Lord is in your movie. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, he, uh, so he was, he was teaching or over the psychology department at a, at a seminary in Florida. And then he came on staff at Christ Covenant Presbyterian in Knoxville who their head pastor is one of my best friends, Seth Hammond, who's also in the in the film, and so he connected us. But yeah, Colefield, listening to him, it's like I don't know. He, he's like wisdom and a soothing voice. It's pretty cool. That's a small world right there. That's awesome. Yeah, he, he wasn't as wise when he was seventeen years old. <laughs> I'll tell you that him. right now. I'm going to tell him you said that. <laughs> but uh, let's let's talk about uh, addiction in America, opioid addiction. Um, I did. I don't know if you ever heard or heard of the movie by a, a Christian singer by the name of Russ Taff. 
There's a film we did called that I did with him called I Still Believe, where he talked about his alcohol addiction. Mm. Um, and so, and we talked a lot about hiding, hiding in the church. People come to church and they put on their Sunday smile and they're dealing with this addiction and they hide because they don't feel safe. Can we, can we talk a little bit first off just about the problem, kind of like a big, you know, bird's eye view. Tell me a little bit about the problem of addiction in America right now. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not getting better. It's getting worse. And I, you know, I think, just last year in 2020, which is our most recent data when it comes to drug overdose deaths, it rose 30% from the year before. And it went from, I want to say 70,000 drug overdose deaths to 93,000 in one year. So a 20,000 increase, a 30% increase. And that's only drug, that doesn't include alcohol related deaths. And so the problem is getting worse and worse. And, and, uh, it's not getting better, and I think the modality is is the issue. When people when people see it and try to have behavior modification, or and they identify and they put their identity in this, and they're told, you know, just you can have a god of your own understanding and those things. When the Bible says, "Lean not on your own understanding," and that's that's probably why you're you're chasing the pill or the bottle in the first place is because you're trying to lean on your own understanding, and so. It's getting worse in this country, but probably globally. And the church, this is a spiritual issue. Like I said earlier, addiction is not a surprise to God. And the Bible says that if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. It also says the sun sets free is free indeed. And so when you line these things up, if you, what we teach guys in our curriculum is straight from Second Peter when it talks about escaping desires. And if someone who's ever struggled with a chemical dependence or anything, really, I don't think it's hindrance on that, but that word desire means something different. You hear the stories of kids being left in cars over drugs. You hear this, these cra- I did crazy things because of a drug, and that desire is almost indescribable. And when the Bible says that you can escape the desires, the corruption that's in the world through sinful desires in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 11, Man, that is a, that's a mic drop moment. The Bible said it, so be it. God said it, so be it. And so the church, we've, we've, we, 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 capital C Church, we've got to stop handing a heavily spiritual issue off to the secular world to deal with, or we're going to continue to get worse and worse and worse as we're seeing. So uh, now with, with alcohol uh, deaths, are, are, you, are we at about 200,000 a year? With- I want to say that – I want to say that's – I want to say, well, it's it, it, it's such a skewed number because I mean they're they're not. If someone says what are alcohol deaths, then they're going to look at okay, someone who had alcohol poisoning and died, or maybe some kind of liver disease. But that's not going to include you know drunk driving deaths, right? Yeah, that, that killed them and others, maybe. Sure. But I would say I would say it's probably quite a bit over the ninety thousand drug overdose deaths. So, so we're close to two hundred thousand a year drugs and alcohol. Deaths. I would think uh, absolutely. And, and you, you would think there'd be a little bit more of an outcry about that in our in our society. So the government has their ways of dealing with this, and then these faith faith based organizations like the S two L. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the difference uh, b- between the effectiveness of the government trying to fix this problem? and faith-based uh, un- unities doing it. Absolutely. I think, well, I mean, so government, but also secular modalities that, um, how much trouble are you allowed to get in on your radio station? <laughs> Let me start there Let me, on your on your program. How much trouble are you allowed to get in? Because I'm, what, I'm, what I have to say is controversial, but it's it's true to the word and it's true to the reality of this. I've done this for a decade. Are you, are you good to get in some trouble? Go, go. Okay. All right. So... Uh, anytime that a prophet is involved, let, let, let's put it this way. Just, just a little fun fact. Yeah, we're when, not word. Of, we're not word of faith here, but go ahead. Okay, yeah, my, my, me either. But when OxyContin, the pharmaceutical company, I think Purdue put was pushing OxyContin to the doctors, they told the doctors, and the FDA approved that less than one percent of the people taking this will become addicted to it. What? That's absurd. Oxycontin's a molecule off from heroin. 
Mm. And so, so when you see stuff like that, and all of a sudden now you get these brain children involved, and they start talking about, okay, hey, you identify with this, even basics. So when you go into a room, you have to acknowledge before you could speak, hey, my name is Adam, and I'm an addict or an alcoholic. Well, that's mm. psychology 101. That's that. If you tell a little girl that she's going to be ugly from the time that she's little until she's older, she's going to grow up and do things that uh, she's going to think she's ugly. Mm. And so when you call yourself and you identify with the sin or the past that you've had, man, that is so damaging. But when you read God's word and he talks about that you're made new and that you're free, that's hope and hope is powerful. And so and now I preface that with saying, hey, doctors, medication, nursing, therapists, counseling, that's from God if it's in its proper place. At S2L, we have all of those things. And now the big thing that you're seeing, you're, you're seeing medication-assisted treatment, MAT, and it's 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 in a certain context, medication is good. But when you start talking long term, it's pharmaceutical drugs made by the same pharmaceutical companies that got us into this in the first place. And like I said in the film, it's like what sound minded person honestly believes that that's the answer out of this? Just taking more drugs from the same company that got us into it. Yeah, that can't be can the make, answer. Where out they can of make it. the money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's, and so at S2L, that's what I said. Our curriculum is called Lost and Found Recovery in Christ. We have doctors, nurses, clinicians, but they have a biblical worldview, and they see people made in the Imago Dei, in the image of God. And so we treat people accordingly. Uh, we, we, we don't put someone on a medication long term just so they return in you know, a year or two now trying to get off of that medication. Off the new medication. So instead of, yeah. hi, I'm, I'm uh, Adam, I'm an addict, it's, hi, I'm Adam. A redeemed child of God, which is a complete yeah. different identity. You're listening to the Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio. My guest today is Adam Comer, and we're talking about uh, his uh, new movie that he's directed called The Forgotten Pandemic, and uh, also talking about just the problem of uh, opioid and drug addiction here in our nation and, and just how bad it's gotten. Um, real quick, S2L, what does that stand for? Spring to Life. Spring to Life. So S2L, you could get more information about uh, th- this recovery program, s2lrecovery.org. And um, let's talk a little bit about the movie then. So, so we've got this film, The Forgotten Pandemic. And uh, can we talk, talk a little bit about some of, uh, you had mentioned earlier, just how difficult making a, a documentary oh, is. And, so, and you're not tackling like a small subject, something light and airy, like, you know, the day in the life of a guy on a, on a, on a tractor. You're you're talking about a you know a pandemic of drug and opioid addiction. Uh, talk a little bit about some of just what were some eye opening things for you in directing your first uh, your first uh, documentary. Oh yeah, okay. So <laughs> just the time that is involved and the attention to detail. I mean, uh, I don't think the mass. I know the mass majority of people that aren't in the space realize what goes into making a quality film. Uh, so not only the lights and getting the camera set up and traveling to the location that you're shooting, setting all this stuff up, making sure the microphones and audio is good and the lighting's just right and the picture's great. And then you got to go to post-production, which is 50 times longer and the, the more tedious work to go into it. And it is a lot of work if it's done right. And, and man, I have such a high respect for filmmakers now. Um, just because there's so much that goes into it. The slightest thing that you and I now will look at and change, it's like it could be a second, a second in a scene that spent so much time to make sure it looked and sounded just right. Uh, But in watch time, it could have just skipped by in a second. And I don't think people understand that. I didn't. (laughs) I didn't. And um, I, I need some, I still need a break and rest from after making this first one before we dive into another project. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> yes, it's a big it's a big endeavor. You know, you you get all these different people you're interviewing. You have all these interviews, and I know on the last Show Me the Father movie that I did with the Kendrick brothers, mm-hmm. uh, we had probably oh gosh, forty hours of interview. I don't know. So I'm going to go through all the transcripts, and I'm highlighting all the transcripts and trying to figure out what I want to keep and what I don't want to keep. What we want, you know. I mean, I spent three and a half months doing that. Yeah, yeah. Just going through transcripts, trying to figure out how I wanted to write this thing, you know. So yeah. it it's, it can be overwhelming, just overwhelming, and it's on your brain twenty four seven. 
Yeah, just it is. It is overwhelming, and it's like, ah, oh, did he did he say it a different way than you know when I asked him that again? And so I think it was the same around forty fifty hours of interviews, and that's condensed down to forty minutes. Like, yeah. think about that for a second. <laughs> Our docu the, the, the forgotten pandemics a forty minute documentary, but that's condensed down to forty minutes. <laughs> so, wow, amazing. Yeah. Now, talk to me how how can people see this? Tell me how you can see uh, the forgotten pandemic. So yeah, so right now it is at theforgottenpandemic.com. Uh, that is, and uh, you know, another aspect to this is distribution that I knew nothing about beforehand, but we've partnered with some people and um, we're, we're hoping to, uh, and we're kind of being told at the beginning of the year, there could be some uh, Christian networks and things like that that want to pick it up. So, oh, great. Um, so it's not on YouTube. It would be if, if we... If we didn't think it would be picked up, but we're told if we put it for free, you know, just on YouTube, then other places are going to pass. And we want it to be on the biggest platform it can be for the most people to see it. But right now, theforgottenpandemic.com, you can rent it or buy it. You could buy and, it. And I mean, you know, just I think I've done what? I've done six documentaries. So five documentaries. Um, you know, you got to, there's a lot of costs involved. You got yeah. you got to have somebody to run sound, somebody to do the lighting, and somebody to bring the camera. You got to have cameras, and then you got to show up to somebody's place, and you got to set up, and you got to drive there, and drive to you know Knoxville, and you got to get a hotel, and I mean it's expensive. Yeah. You, you, it you, is. It, it costs a lot of money to do this. So um, uh, going to the forgotten and helping uh, support this is a, is a great thing. Uh, don't think that. You know, filmmakers need people to buy tickets. You know, Christian people say, well, why aren't there that many Christian films out? Well, people need to go buy tickets. They want to go see Christian films. We had our our movie Show Me the Father in theaters, and, you know, nobody wanted to go to theaters because of the pandemic, because of COVID. And, you know, how, how are we going to make any more of those? So, yeah, um, and that was, that was in 1,100 theaters, wasn't it? Wasn't that a yep, pretty big... Yep. Eleven hundred theaters. Mm-hmm. Brag and on so, that for a minute. It got an A plus. Uh, wow. Well, yeah. Hey, I you did, did a little homework. research too. And I mean, that's that's a big deal. I mean, so and and here's not that we're going to sit here and have a complaining session about making films, but I think another mindset too when people think Christian, they also think free, and that's just not how economy. Like we we couldn't we can't do it for free. Someone's paying for it, right? Like the the guy that's with the camera that's filming. I mean, we can't ask him, "Hey, spend eight hours with me today and do it for free." Yeah, let's go. And to, so, let's go to. Let's go to. Uh, we're going to go to Indiana, and so I'm going to ask all the gas stations to give me free gas. That's right. Yeah. Right, <laughs> and then I'm going to get a free rent a car because I got to have yeah. a big van, and then I'm going to get a free hotel, and I'm going to get all the free food, and you know, I mean, it just doesn't work that way. And so, yeah. uh, Christian, Christian, I, you know, I harp on this all the time. If Christians want Christian films, you got to go out and support them. You got to yeah. support your Christian films. If you want to, you know, and, you know, Show Me the Father did $1.9 million at box office so far, but it's a $5 million break even. Yeah. So everybody's yeah. losing money because people didn't want to go to the theater. Oh, I'll wait till it comes out on streaming or I'll wait till the DVD. Okay, great. Now, now you know, we're not going to make another one, you know, because nobody went. So, I mean, if yeah. you want, hey, we love Show Me the Father. Oh, so great. Oh, it's so awesome. Make another, make another. Well, guess what? If you aren't going to go to the movie theater and buy tickets... How in the world can we make another one? So anyway, right. okay, I'm off of that. Yeah, You're hey, listening we're like, to two, the, we're like t- <laughs> two grumpy old men here. <laughs> yeah, I'm off. I'm done. We're done. You're listening to the Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio, uh, the Grumpy Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio, and uh, no, my guest me. today, my guest today <laughs> is the not as grumpy uh, Adam Comer, uh, CEO of uh, S2L Recovery and also director of the new film The Forgotten Pandemic. So, you know what, uh, would you mind telling me a little bit, uh, we, we've got about six minutes left here, tell me a little bit about your own story and your own interest in addiction and uh, kind of your own journey through it. Yeah, absolutely. So, so my story, um, man, I had a life of addiction that I battled through for a long time. Uh, and, you know, I actually grew up, as we discussed earlier, in Knoxville. I played sports at, at Bearden. I had two parents who loved me. And, and I guess I just preface that because a lot of times when you hear – stories of addiction there's a lot of trauma and drama uh and, and that's not my story uh what you know had a amazing family ended up going down to new orleans after hurricane katrina 
and um, hurt, hurt my back and was introduced to pain medication. And when I tasted that for the first time, that was, that was um, man, I knew that that was the answer or that's what I had been missing. And, and man, when I went off to college and everything, I, I was partying, I just went off the deep end. But when I tried these, it was just something clicked in my head. This is what I've got to do. And so that spiraled out of control. Um, living a double life, I ended up marrying my high school sweetheart, um, got married, and man, things went downhill quick. Ended up just just a flyby, just for so I don't <laughs> drag this out, but lost everything, went to secular rehabs, tried the AA and NA meetings, hundreds of them, or maybe even, I, don't, I would say thousands of them, and I think that's accurate. And wow. just wasn't working, just was, wasn't, I could play the game and I could do what they wanted me to do and say the chants and mantras and do that. But I, I knew that I was always planning for something else. And so I Googled, is there such thing as Christian addiction recovery? Cause you know, I grew up in church and if this wasn't working, there's gotta be something else. And so S2L recovery uh, popped up and it was in middle Tennessee and I was like, okay, I'm going to try it. And I remember, Rick, when I came, it was the, the, the Easter season. And like I said, I grew up in church, and so I knew the Easter story very well. But in this moment, man, God broke me, and it was beautiful. I, it wasn't mm. then, but it was the most beautiful thing that's happened in my life. And I saw that he died for me, and in that moment I felt so dirty, and I felt like he just whispered, you know, I love you. And that moment, and I was so unlovable, and it radically changed me. Um, at that time, my wife had left me. <clears throat> you know, I had stolen from everybody that I could steal from back home. But God began to restore me in that moment, and I began to say things like, you know what, God, even if you don't restore my marriage, even if I have to go to jail, even if I have to suffer these consequences, I'm still going to serve you. And things began to change, and I wanted to, I got hungry for his word and wanted to learn about it, and God began to restore my marriage even. And <laughs> Praise the, God. And at the end of that, you know, they offered, S2L offered me an internship, and, you know, I was, I was like, okay, I do kind of feel called to lead people, but this, I can't do a staff, but I'll do an internship for a few months, and then I got to head back to East Tennessee. For those listening, if you don't know, Knoxville's about two and a half, three hours away from Middle Tennessee, and... At the end of that three months, they did what I thought they were going to do. They offered me a full-time position, and I just gave them, you know, God's restoring my marriage. My wife and family, her wife and family all live three hours away, and so I gave them the church answer, and we prayed about it. Hey, we're gonna, we need to pray about it, right? But I knew the answer was no in my mind. And so, hey, give us three days. And on the second day of praying about it, my wife, her boss came to her and said, hey, we have a promotion, potential promotion that we want to offer you, but you'd have to be willing to move to Middle Tennessee to take it. <laughs> and so, yeah, so we we're like, okay, we get it. And so just surrendered to that. And when I started at S2L, I was making $50 a week, um, driving about a, 45 minutes to an hour to work. And mm -hmm. it was just enough barely to cover the fuel. And it was just faithful, but God began to open doors and and now, um, yeah, now he's called me to be a leader there, and we have a family here in Middle Tennessee, and um, S2L has just grown so much. We have, um, we're licensed by the state. We have a joint commission accreditation. We're a nonprofit, and we're Christ-centered. Are, are you the CEO of the company now? I am, yeah. I'm the, I'm the chief. Yeah, so God's called me to be the CEO of the very program I came into a decade ago. So from driving 50 bucks a week as a driver to uh, <laughs> to the CEO, praise the Lord. God is, yeah. God is good. God is and, good. Uh, yeah, what a, what a story. I, I interviewed a singer, Joseph Habedank. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He's a uh, Southern gospel singer. But he, same story, you know, wow. got, got uh, an injury that the, the doctors give him this, uh, you know, heroin-based opioid. And he started taking it, and it was like, oh, man, this, change, this changes my life. Oh, this is what I've been looking for, and became an addict immediately mm. and ruined his life. And, you know, God did a similar story. But that is so common. I mean, it's like they've—it's it, almost like they're making these drugs to addict you, and they're saying 1%, less than 1% <laughs> will be addicted? Yeah. What a, and what the, a joke. And, and the FDA is putting their stamp of approval on it. So it's a, it's a, it's a money thing. Big Pharma has their hands in – I mean, again, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. Well, you look but at it, the it top – you look at the senator. They have – you know, you can go online and you can look at what the senators have their stock in, senators right. and congressmen. And the top five stocks of, of Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, 
you know, all these drug companies, you know, that's who the senators have their stock in. So that tells you something right there. Anyway, yeah. and again, we're getting grumpy and we digress. Let's let's go back to the forgotten hey, pandemic. <laughs> I think it's I think it's righteous anger, right? Is there that how we go. we could justify it with righteous <laughs> anger? <laughs> so, well, um, man, we're out of time, dude. This is great. Thanks so much for talking about this. Yeah, you can see, and I recommend you go do this. The forgotten pandemic uh, by going to theforgottenpandemic dot com. You can get more information. You know, if you if you want to go to a Christ based uh, addiction, uh, addiction recovery uh, facility, you can get information by s two l recovery dot org. S two L and S two L stands for Spring to Life. And when you type it in, it's the numeral two, not T O. The number yep. two. The number yeah. two. Spring to Life. S the number two L recovery dot org, and. Uh, any more info of where they can find out about you, Adam? Yeah, man, we have a lot of Christ-centered addiction recovery resources at s the number two l dot net. We have workbooks and teaching guides and video series for any church to start a recovery, a weekly recovery meeting, and stuff like that. Um, well, man, and we're blessed to to be a blessing. Well, thank you, Adam, for being on the show. Sure, appreciate it. Yeah, Rick, thank you so much, man. <laughs>